Frank Clara Folsom was born in Buffalo, New York to Emma and Oscar Folsom, a lawyer who was a descendant of the earliest European settlers of Exeter, New Hampshire. She was their only child to survive infancy. She was originally given the first name Frank in honor of her uncle, but later decided to adopt the feminine variant, Frances. A longtime close friend of Oscar Folsom was the 27-year-old Grover Cleveland. He was fond of Oscar's infant, buying her a baby carriage and dotting on her as she grew up. When her father died in a carriage accident in July 23, 1875, without having written a will, the court appointed Grover Cleveland administrator of his estate. President Grover Cleveland proposed to Frances in the spring of 1885 when she visited Washington, D.C. with her mother. They were married on June 2, 1886 in the Blue Room of the Executive Mansion. Grover was aged 49, Frances 21. President Cleveland was the second president to wed while in office after John Tyler. At 21 years, Frances Cleveland was the youngest first lady in history and the public soon warmed to her beauty and warm personality. The Clevelands had five children, Ruth, Esther, Marion, Richard, and Francis. Esther remains the only child of the president to have been born in the executive mansion in April 1896. In April 1896, Esther contracted measles when it spread to the executive mansion leading to a quarantine. After leaving the executive mansion on March 4, 1897, the Clevelands lived in retirement at his estate, Westland Mansion in Princeton, New Jersey. Grover Cleveland's health had been declining for several years, and in the autumn of 1907 he fell seriously ill. In 1908 he suffered a heart attack and died on June 24 at age 71 in his Princeton residence. After her husband's death, Frances Cleveland remained in Princeton, New Jersey. On February 10, 1913, at the age of 48, she married Thomas J. Preston Jr., a professor of archaeology at Wells College. She was the first presidential widow to remarry. She was vacationing at St. Moritz, Switzerland, with her daughters Marion and Esther and her sons Francis when World War I started in August 1914. They returned to the United States on October 1, 1914. Soon afterwards, she became a member of the Pro-War National Security League, becoming its director of the Speaker's Bureau and the Committee on Patriotism through Education in November 1918. She stirred up controversy within the National Security League with claims that large sections of the population were unassimilated and in a sense prevented the country from working together properly. After causing outrage among the rank and file of the organization by wanting to psychologically indoctrinate school children to be in favor of war, she resigned on December 8, 1919. She also campaigned against women's suffrage, contending that women weren't yet intelligent enough to vote. In May 1913, she was elected as vice president of the New Jersey Association Opposed to Women's Suffrage and served as the president of the Princeton chapter. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, she led the Needlework Guild of America in its clothing drive for the poor. While staying at her son Richard's home for his 50th birthday in Baltimore, Maryland, Frances Cleveland died in her sleep at the age of 83 on October 29, 1947. She was buried in Princeton Cemetery next to President Cleveland, her first husband.